Hi, good evening. How are you? Uh, it's a um, blessed uh, Sabbath to all of us. I'll be sharing my screen. Sorry, my camera is way up high and I can't, maybe I'm not seeing you. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm seeing you, but I'm not uh, looking at you in the, in the right way because maybe if I look this way, I will not be seeing my screen. So I'll be looking this way, All right? Here, uh, I'll be starting to present. Happy Sabbath to all of us. I'm so happy as well because you know, the reason is uh, I was invited to be your speaker and uh, it's a great opportunity to speak before you and be able to share the blessings uh, this message that will bless us tonight. But before we start, shall we pray? Our most gracious and kind of the Father, we're so happy indeed that tonight we'll be sharing this wonderful message, this message that will bring, give us hope, a message that will encourage us and bless us. Help us, the Father, as we're going to learn uh, things from you, open the gates from heaven, and the Holy Spirit be with us. We love you and just we pray. Amen. So, actually, I was approached by one of your uh, colleagues, and she asked me if I can speak uh, during your best first meeting, but uh, I was a little bit. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't decline her offer because uh, uh, I'm afraid of this uh, colleague of yours. So I, I cannot uh, say no. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I want to ask you a question. What is uh, the longest word in the English dictionary? You have any guesses? Uh, according to my presentation, it's the word smile because it has a smile in it. Okay. Uh, lately, I'm very fond of uh, dad jokes. So, <laughs> is this a sign of uh, getting older? Or, <laughs> anyways, yeah, because it has a it has a smile in it. If if you have a chance to smile, it's it's so hard to smile these days, especially when you are almost graduating because you are faced with a lot of formats, pressured with a lot of exams, and uh, there's a lot of pressure on both sides. But it's so hard to smile. But anyways. Uh, as Filipinos, they always say that Filipinos always try to find a way to smile. And yeah, I think it might help us. How do you define life? What is life? I want to tell you a story. Uh, years ago, this is a fictional. I don't know if this is real or not. Years ago, there was a there was a rich, uh, very rich uh, business person. He is very successful. He created his own empire, but the problem is he has no ear to his business. It's because of their culture. He has a daughter, a very beautiful daughter. But the problem is that uh, 
he has no uh, son. So therefore, uh, he's, he had a hard time looking for a son to, to uh, be able to take over the business when he dies. He's already old and he's still looking for someone who will take over. So he had an idea, what if I will uh, be able to invite all the gentlemen in the country, to invite all the handsome young men in that area. If I was there, maybe, of course, I will be there because they were asking for handsome young men. <laughs> but uh, the, all of them were invited and uh, they were having this party, this old rich man is having his party. And uh, actually his main purpose is to find someone who is uh, able to take over the, the, the business. And he has this very unique uh, selection process. He called uh, the young guys near him, said he, he did an announcement. Okay, let's start it with his announcement. Hello, uh, young friends. You see, I'm old and uh, I'm already old. I'm gonna die sooner or later. But I have a problem. My problem is that no one will take over. You know that in our culture, women at that time and in their culture, women can take over but it, it must be men. Yeah, it's sad. That's how sad. <laughs> it's not sad, but we cannot blame that that's their culture. So he had this selection process and he said, uh, you know, I have a preposition. If you pass this challenge, then you will have my beautiful daughter and my business. So uh, the challenge is this. You can have you seen this river at your side? The young gentlemen were looking at the river. Yes, we have seen this river beside us. Here's the challenge. If you cross this river, this river is packed with crocodiles. If you cross this river packed with crocodiles, from here, you will jump in this river, pack the crocodiles, you will swim as fast as you could, and then you can uh, be on the other side of the river. Then you will have my daughter and my big company. Wow, those gentlemen, they were saying, no way, that's a suicide. <laughs> It's, it's so hard, it's so hard, it's impossible. But I said, that's, that's my challenge. You see that it's very ironic because the father is looking for someone, but it seems that his challenge is not looking for someone. Uh, maybe that company is not, you're not giving the company because it's, you're giving an impossible challenge. One hour, two hours left, went by, no one, nobody, ever dared to jump on that river. Three hours, four hours went by, five hours, six hours, seven hours, no one ever jumped on that river. They've been waiting for the whole night, no one ever jumped on that river. The father was almost uh, giving up his hopes but he heard a splash in the river. Oh, with effects, Fayona. <laughs> he heard a splash in the river. And he heard and he saw this gentleman was swimming so fast. He was swimming, swimming. And he was very fast. He evaded the crocodiles and he went on the other side of the river. The, the father was so excited. I, last i've seen someone who will take over me so he went on his chopper and he went in his helicopter his i mean his chopper he went on the other side of the river 
And then he's, he met this guy, gentleman, young gentleman, said, come here, come here, boy. Congratulations. You will have my daughter and my big company. Are you excited? The, the, the young man was, was uh, he, it seems that he's not in his mind. He said, hey, hey, are you okay? The father was asking him, no, no, I'm not okay. Of course he's not okay, that young guy. Well, what what are you asking? Are, are you asking for something? Is it is it not enough? My daughter is not enough. The company is not enough. No, no. Yes, I mean yes. That's not enough. I'm looking. I'm seeking for justice. Justice because someone pushed me on the other side of the river. <laughs> you see, some some of us were just pushed. Some of us were just accidentally uh, chose this path. Sometimes some of us are asking, is, is my life is just an accident? Did I, this is, I don't know. I don't feel that my, my program that I am now is, is real. I mean, someone just pushed me in this, department or in this program someone just pushed me in pursuing this life some of us define life as an accident is it really an accident well let's try to look for a definition of life some uh, famous people uh, you know kobe bryant you know when i was young i he was one of my idols, yeah, Kobe Bryant. According to him, he said, life is a game. That's what he said. And if, if life is a game, then that means that I have to play hard. Play hard. Some of us, uh, you know Travis, he was one also of my idols. You know, he's uh, Travis Scott. He is a great uh, dirt bike rider. He's a stunt originally. Uh, I mean, he became famous in stunts, but I think he went to on racing. But according to these racers, life is a race. So therefore, what? We have to strive to win. Uh, this is my cousin, Maria Sharapova. <laughs> according to her, life is a competition. Therefore, struggle to survive. Therefore, life is a decision-making process. There's a lot of people. There, all of us have different kinds of uh, definition of life. So, since uh, life is a decision-making process, therefore, we choose the best. What's the best life? But actually, life is a gift from God. Do you believe in this? Indeed, I, I really believe in this. Life is a gift from God. Life is a journey. All of life is a journey. Whichever path we take, that becomes our destination. How happy are we? when we get there. Do you believe in this? You, uh, when I was young, I really wanted to, you know, I'm a math major. When I was young, I was, uh, I love math so much, uh, but I'm not good at math. I just love math. And uh, all I was thinking, I wanted to become a mathematician someday. So, uh, that's it. It's like life is a journey. I mean, math is a journey. And uh, when I will get there, I know I will be happy. When I will be uh, finished with my math degree, I will be happy. Well, uh, we have a few months, right? I have a few months ahead to become uh, unemployed. <laughs> but I am happy, though. Uh, uh, I am happy. I will be happy if uh, I finish my degree. 
according to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and men. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us put God in our hearts for us to have success. That's life. We wanted a successful life. And in order to get there, what? We must seek favor from God. But uh, life is a dream. Life is a dream. The, the title of my sermon actually is Power of Dreams. And uh, I want to bring you here in dream. When you were in senior high school, did you ever dream to become, I think most of you here, interns, dream to become a doctor, right? Yeah. This is the most common. Uh, uh, we wanted to do a survey, the math and physics department, and URC wanted to do a survey regarding uh, MLS. And uh, I think most of my friends really wanted to become a doctor and then one of the best stepping stones is becoming a med tech. You know, when you were in senior high, you were dreaming that I would become like this and that. And actually, I just realized that uh, dreaming of becoming someone does not end after college. We still have more, right? Bachelor's degree is not enough nowadays. Life is a dream. Have you visited here, Disneyland? Yeah, me too. Uh, me too. I never visited here. <laughs> Maybe some of you have uh, went here, have gone here. It's a wonderful place, right? But all these things started with a dream. By who? By Mr. Walt Disney. He's a famous cartoonist. He is the creator of Disney. Mickey, according to him, Mickey popped out of my mind on a drawing pad while on a train and a time when business was very low and disaster was right around the corner. Mickey Mouse went, came in. It's just a dream. Remember, this whole thing was started with a dream and a mouse. Millions of people, thousands of people every year visits Disneyland, every breath of Disneyland there. It's just a dream. Therefore, according to Joel 2.28, what? Dream big. The word here is big. It's a description. It's a description of size, right? It's not small. It's not medium. It's not dream small, dream medium. It's what? Dream big. If you can dream it, you can have it. Wow, it's like a slogan of uh, some company. If you can dream it, you can have it. Uh, it's like a car loan uh, <laughs> slogan. If you can dream it, you can have it. Just dream it. Uh, if you can dream it, you can have it. Video, we find ways. <laughs> it's like that, right? But it's true. Let's uh, dig deeper on dreams. I, I, I put acronyms on dreams. The power of dreams. Letter D. Let's start with D, of course. Diligence. Uh, this was taken in Pakistan. I was there serving for three years. Uh, as a missionary, our family was uh, assigned there as a missionary in Pakistan for three years. And it seemed that these students uh, are very diligent. Pakistanis are very diligent in their studies as well. They're almost the same with the Indians, right? They're very diligent. Uh, and that's why you can, if you 
if you are having a hard time in math and you just search uh, search them in the uh, internet in YouTube, you can see a lot of uh, uh, Indians, Pakistanis in uh, uh, giving simplified <laughs> mathematical or chemistry uh, lectures because they are very good at studying and then somehow they find a way to simplify things. How about this? Is this uh, diligence? Yeah, you need to rest sometimes, right? So uh, according to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, give me a man who does his work diligently and I will show a man worthy to stand before kings and he is not an ordinary man. Hard work. What does it say? say hard work never killed anyone. Is this true? Over fatigue. Hard work never killed anyone but over fatigue is. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know already your uh, limitations. But it's just an encouragement that we really need to be diligent and to be hardworking for us to achieve our dreams. R, what is R? Replanning. Luke chapter 14, verse 28. If you have a Bible with you, then you can read that. Replanning. Good plans shape what? Good decisions. And that's why good planning helps to make an elusive dream come true. And you're an architect. Of course, you cannot uh, make beautiful buildings without what? Without uh, planning. Uh, you're not in. Uh, the hospital management will not be in order without planning, right? So for us to have dreams, it's not just spontaneous. We have to Plan, replan. When you plan to build a house, okay, it's ready in Luke 14, 28, right? Don't you first sit down and figure out what it will cost you to see if you have enough money to finish it. That's R. Letter E. Enthusiasm. So what we have, letter D, we have diligence, R, rethinking or replanning. E, enthusiasm. What is enthusiasm? Nothing great was achieved without enthusiasm. Wow. So beautiful. Uh, one of the uh, richest man here is Mr. Mian Muhammad Mansha. He's an owner of a big textile company and has a five-star uh, hotel in London. And he's, without enthusiasm, was not able to achieve uh, success. It's not only enthusiasm, it's not enough, but we really need also to what? To have action. We have diligence, R, rethinking, E, enthusiasm, and A, action. Diligence sustains you on what you're doing. Now it, we are trying to differentiate things here. Rethinking guides you with what you do and action determines how well you do it. Uh, we need to really be doers only, not hearers. And this is also an emphasis not only in our life but also as a Seventh-day Adventist or as a Christian in spreading the word of God, right? We are not only hearers when we hear the message, of course, we must uh, also be doing it. Part of our dreams in life, part especially, is not only for ourselves, but most of all, it's for the Lord. So it's not only theory, right? When you achieve your dreams, it's not 
by theory, but we need to do action. And uh, of course, in, we all knew this slogan from night, just do it. Uh, exam is so hard, just do it. <laughs> uh, I have a friend, uh, I, I asked her, she, she was ranting things on me, she said, it's so hard, everything was so uh, stressful. Uh, uh, I advise you just just do it. And you you can you can do it. Yeah. Anyways, even though uh, you, you you rant or you're giving up, at the end of the day, you, you can do it. You know, when I I started my thesis last year, uh, my professor told me you will do this uh, as a math major. We, our thesis is very different. We are trying to make theory. And supposedly my thesis, I, I just wanted to make it simple, but just uh, plotting COVID-19 and then things like that. But my professor said, you, you try to do analysis. Uh, you try to do doing, making a new theory for mathematics. And I said, I think that's so hard for me, sir. Uh, I think I cannot, I can't do it. Uh, but he told this, this one thing struck in me. Said, you know, students will just do anything. For me, it, it seems that students are, are not, there's nothing that students cannot do. When you give them a requirements, when they give us requirements, at the end of the day, we can still do it. You just push through it. And that way that makes it very uh, possible because of him. And that's my mentor, my professor. All these things without the guidance of our mentors, all these things will be uh, is, is, is not guided and it's yeah, there's no direction. We need mentors. And those are our teachers, right? Our, especially uh, our uh, Sir Kirk is our MLS uh, intern coordinator. He is also our mentor. And God uh, gave them to us to guide us. Because they are the people. Uh, there's one mentor who told me, he said, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert in life, nor more intelligent than you, but I'm a veteran. That's what he said. I know what's happening here in the battlefield. You know, in, in, in army, uh, if you're a graduate from PMA, there's a lot of expectations because you 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 have been in one of the best military schools in the Philippines. You're in PMA, but when when it comes to the field, those senior master sergeants are better. Most uh, some of them are better than those fresh graduates from, which are lower rank but higher in age, are better there because they are veteran. They have been there, experienced a lot of things. And this is what made teachers above us. And they have this authority to guide us because they have a lot more experiences than us. There's a poem here, why God made teachers. Because God understood our thirst for knowledge and our need to be led by someone who is wiser. Because he needed a heart of patience, of encouragement, someone who could see the potential and believe in the best in others. So God made teachers. God made mentors. What is D again? D for diligence, R, rethinking, E, enthusiasm, action, mentors, and S, someone who can guess. What's S? That's last but not the least. And that is spirit.
the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters in Christ. All these things that we have discussed, you are diligent, you have good plans, you are enthusiastic, you are uh, enthusiastic, enthusiastic means you are happy of doing something and then you are active, you are proactive in uh, in your dreams, in your goals in life, you have good mentors, but nothing can beat our master mentor, and that is the Holy Spirit. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I hope that our dreams in life must be submitted to God. Maybe some of you are confused. Well, what will happen after graduation? Personally, I am confused as well. I was confused a lot of times. Well, what will happen after graduation? Some of you there sitting back, you are confused. What will happen in my gradu after my graduation? Is this dream really for me? Is this really my dream? But it is not by our own effort of thinking about it. You see, Zechariah 4, 6 is very clear. Not by my, not by own, our own effort, effort. Not by, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. We will submit all our dreams to him. We will be submitting all these plans to him. And he will be directing us. As I end this sermon, I want to uh, remind all of us that uh, achieving dreams is difficult. It's uh, very hard. It's a very long process. You may forget all those acronyms, but I hope this letter S, you'll never forget. Let God lead you. Let go and let God. May the Lord bless us all tonight.